Another very busy weekend of Premier League football coming up. Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp has stated it made sense to give the players two days off. Arsenal boss Arteta has urged the club to earn the right to be Premier League champions. Conte's assistant Stellini has stated we trust Fraser Forster. And Pep Guardiola has stated we will accept what the judge and Premier League decide. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well. This is another edition of Premier League News, where I began for all of the latest news concerning all Premier League clubs and looking at the weekend's fixtures. So the first game of the weekend, Saturday lunchtime, is a London derby. West Ham United take on Chelsea at the London Stadium. West Ham United are currently in a relegation fight, sitting just above the relegation zone in 17th place. And Chelsea are sat in 9th place. But David Moyes has stated, hopefully, we will give Chelsea a good game. Uh, we can take time, I can tell you that with us bringing new players in. But... Uh... I think when you spend 600 million, you know, it should give you half a chance, really, you know, because, uh, but again, money isn't always the only thing to do with football. You've got to get the team right, you've got to get all the other uh, parts of it going well. So, uh, hopefully, we can give Chelsea a good game. Obviously, they're a really good team. They've got some really talented players they've brought in. And, uh, but they'll need time to gel, just like the ones we brought in in the summer are, are taking a bit of time to gel as well. Now, ahead of the West Ham clash, Graham Potter had his press conference and has said that it is Chelsea's job to support struggling player Mark Cucurella. There was a tweet liked by uh, Todd Bowley that stated it was an article written by Football London that said that Mark Cucurella is not good enough to play for the club. I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't comment. Um, it's nothing that I would say is a reflection of, of, of Todd in any way. Um, but I don't know how social media works. Um, like I said, everybody here is really supportive of Mark and we're trying to help him um, get back to a level that he can get to and enjoy his football. They're human beings and they've got private lives and they have um, things going on and um, Mark's not the only one. <clears throat> and um, at the same time, you understand supporters, they, 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 they pay the money. The most important thing is, is what's happening on that pitch in the 90 minutes. But nevertheless, you have to deal with stuff in your private life um, but no he's I mean he's uh, he's fine he's he's, um, he's going about his work he, he he knows he's probably not in the best moment of form he's, he's ever been in but that's he won't be the only player that has to go through those moments um, he's a player that the club invested uh, money in in the summer and um, it's our job to try and help him and support him and um, and and bring him to the place where he's showing everybody his qualities now at 3pm on Saturday, Arsenal will take on London rivals Brentford. Mikel Arteta has urged his Arsenal team to earn the right to be Premier League champions. It's not about the comfort zone, it's about yeah, in football you're going to lose football matches. Um, very different football matches than the one we lost at City and, and against Everton, but... Um, uh, losing brings a lot of opportunities as well to look at other things and, and see the reaction of the team and the reaction of the team has been superb this week and, uh, and tomorrow we're going to put a great performance in in front of our crowd to, to try to win the game. Hi Miguel, I know you can't or, or really talk about this, the situation in Manchester City but as a team in a tight race against them, do you, does your team have to be ready to, to make to take any kind of advantage that might come if they take their eye off the ball because of all of this? We have enough to look after our own garden. So that's what we do, look after our own garden. Obviously one of the possible sanctions is a, is a points deduction. How determined are you to win this league on the pitch and not have to rely or have any other issue about points deduction for your main line? Let's focus on what we have to do and, and win enough football matches for that to happen. That's it. You want to win it on the pitch? Yeah, we have to end the right to win it, that's for sure.
Now, Saturday afternoon, Tottenham Hotspur travelled to the King Power Stadium to play Leicester City. 3pm kickoff. Club captain Hugo Lloris has been ruled out with a knee injury for between six and eight weeks. Uh, Conte's assistant, Stellini, has stated that Fraser Forster, we trust him. He is an important player. Uh, we trust in him. He knows because uh, it's not the first game uh, he's going to play. And uh, for uh, with your uh, behaviour... With your uh, relationship you create with him, you can transfer to him that you trust in him, and this is what we do during, we did during all the season. So uh, he's, he's a he's a player, he's an important player because, uh, like you said, was also in the national team. So we don't have to transfer to him uh, too much confidence because he has confidence uh, with him because he has a great experience. And it's only the relationship you create with him uh, that uh, let, him and let him understand that you trust in him. Because uh, also he trained very well every day. So is uh... Now four other games will take place in the Premier League on Saturday. Crystal Palace will host Brighton Hove Albion. Fulham will play Nottingham Forest. Southampton against Wolves. And Bournemouth will play Newcastle. Now, on Sunday, Manchester United will travel to Elland Road. Of course, they played the midweek at Old Trafford, drawing 2-2. But Eric Ten Hag has been talking about Garnacho and says he's enjoying the task of developing the player. I think he's doing well and um, he has an impact on our game. I think he's a threat also yesterday. Um, he had good actions, was lively, uh, created chances, but had to score. And uh, finally, it's about that, that you have an effect. Uh, and as a striker, uh, you have to be on, uh, on that list, the scoring list, uh, assist list, key action list, to have the right impact. Uh, it's quite emotional. That is his strength. Uh, he's bringing the game. He wants to win. He wants to play football. He wants to... Uh, and he doesn't want to miss any minute, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, he's totally uh, convinced about himself, so that's a good thing. You need that uh, to, and the, the biggest stress factors that you have to perform, and he's doing. Um, and he wants to contribute till the end, uh, but, um, but he accepts decisions. Um, and yeah, the uh, team is always above everything, and I think he knows that. Now, on Sunday afternoon, Manchester City will take on Aston Villa at the Etihad Stadium. Pep Guardiola's press conference on Friday was heavily dominated by the charges issued to Manchester City from the Premier League. Pep Guardiola said we will accept what the judge and Premier League decide. The first thought is that we are already being condemned. So, like, it's happened, what's happened right now, these weeks after Monday, it's happened the same what happened in UEFA. That UEFA, it was a condemned. We were, uh, we had already accusation, accusation. Now we have just charge. Why should, in that moment when overturned the situation, when they what they told me before the defend the accusation for UEFA, the club proved that were completely innocent. Why should not think right now, when there is not not even accusation, it's just condemned, it's just charges or suggestions. So you have to understand that uh, between 90 teams of the Premier League is accusing us without the latest opportunity to defend. And the word of my club, my owner, my chairman, my CEO, my people explain everything during these three or four years. You know exactly in what, on what side I am. You're confident and obviously innocent until proven guilty, clearly. But because of the unprecedented number of charges over such a long period of time. Does it sadden you that inevitably there will be some out there, people watching on, who will reach a conclusion that some of the achievements, the record-breaking achievements that you've, you've brought to this club are tainted? Another side I would say that we are lucky we live in a, in a marvellous country that uh, we have a society when every, everyone, like you said, is innocent until proven guilty. We didn't have this opportunity. We are already sentenced and tough. What's going to happen, I don't know. So, in the other side, I'm 
personally, I'm happy that we are here because like UEFA happened, okay, we have the chance to defend. We cannot defend. I think we have a good lawyers, but we cannot say that UEFA had the bad, bad lawyers. And I think the Premier League supported for 19 teams to put it out for the Premier League are going to take a good lawyers too to defend the position like we're going to defend our position. I would have loved to wait and see and the time will see or the time will dictate what is going to happen. And just in case we are not innocent, we will accept what the judge, the Premier League decide. But what happened if in the, the same situation that UEFA happened, we are innocent, what happened to restore or pay back our damage? Because the damage is now is for one decade, eight, nine, ten. So one week later, UEFA make a sentence against us. Nine teams, Burley, Wolves, Leicester, Newcastle, Spurs, Arsenal, United, Liverpool, Chelsea. Out of the Champions League, but they won at that position. Like Julius Cesar said, there are not in this world, there are not enemies or friends. There are just interest. And they wanted to put it out to take that position that we want on the pitch, you know, take it there and take it in our position. So now is not the same is different than in that moment. Absolutely zero. The same. The same articles, the same accusations, the same everything. You have to be out of the uh, UEFA Champions League. You have to go to the League One. No, no, League One is too much. League Two. Or maybe conference. We were in main road. We were not a team to won a long history, a lot of titles. We have been in the low divisions. We'll be back there. No, not a problem, just in case. We'll call Paul Dikov, Mike Summerby, and we will do again a good, a good, uh, a good process. We'll be back. I'm pretty sure. But should wait. They should wait. Because at the end is okay. The Premier League had not decide. Put it there. Okay, we're going to defend ourselves. What happened in the? In the, in the UEFA situation. Didn't wait, and now didn't wait. And lastly, Monday Night Football it is the big one. Everton travelled to Liverpool for the Merseyside derby. 8pm kickoff. Now, new Everton manager Sean Dyche, who, of course, took charge of his first Toffees game last week, beat Arsenal 1-0 at Goodison Park. But this one, he said that form goes out the window. You know, we know that it's the form somewhat goes out the window. I think we all, you know, it's the old adage, but... You know, the feel of the game can sometimes affect the game. Um, we're really looking for a performance again. You know, against Arsenal, I said last weekend it was fantastic to get a win, but I was really looking to, for a reaction, you know, a reaction and a performance. And I think we're still laying that down. You know, can we give another performance on the back of a good one? And Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp said it made sense to give the players two days off after their defeat against Wolves. In Germany, this question would have come much earlier. How can you give them two days off when you're in the situation you are in? So in England, you are, you, you are relaxed with that, to be honest. You cannot, even if you want to, you can, but it's not beneficial. You can't train every day. So if we play bad, well, then, the next day we came in and then we take two days off. So we made an analysis, we talked to, we spoke to each other, and then we gave them two days off because it's a very long time between Saturday and Monday. So, but of course, I could have said Sunday training, bam, recovery, whatever, and from Monday on, we go for them. Um, that wouldn't be helpful at all. It would have been bad. It would have caused injuries. It would have caused a lot of problems. And to be honest, on Sunday, after we spoke about everything, I thought 100% it makes sense that we don't see each other for two days. Um, and it was helpful. I, I, I left on Sunday in an average mood and came back. It was a good mood, and I worked through it. I had a lot of phone calls and stuff like this, but anyway, it was in a much better mood. So that's um, in a completely different mood, to be honest. Um, and that's why it's very helpful. So yes, they benefited of it. So that was very good. Thanks for watching, and thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button, like, share, and comment below. And if you're listening to this on an audio platform, please do hit that follow button and leave a review if you can. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you on the next one.